Hi. Is that the right camera? That is the right camera. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Star Citizen Live Game Dev. What a concept. Uh, we are here with lead concept artist, uh, Jeremiah Lee. Uh, Jay Lee, why don't you tell everybody who you are and what you do for Star Citizen? Uh, I'm Jeremiah. and I'm just going to look longingly at you. I, just, hold on. just go ahead. And I'm, I'm the lead concept artist. I concept the art. And I'm the, 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 the lead of that. <laughs> <laughs> Truer words have never been spoken. I don't think I've ever answered that question correctly. Uh, well, we were, think we were thinking about it before we started on the show, about how often we have you on Star Citizen Live. And somebody in, in uh, chat pointed out that it's actually been a year. The yeah. last time I think you've been on this show was August 10th. 2018. It was a That's year ago. Uh, that was the trolling of Jeremiah. Yeah. Uh, where I, I made you, I, we made you play the game, and then I coordinated a bunch of other streamers to just ruin was, your life. It was fun. For me, it was yeah. a lot of fun for me. We we saw a retribution get lift up, lifted off the the landing pad by I think four hornets and then a cutlass. Not not a retribution. No, I'm, I'm not a retro. I'm sorry. The uh, uh, oh shoot, what was it called? The uh, oh, I'm so sorry. UK. What was it? Uh, it's the uh, oh my goodness. Well, Jeremiah tries to remember what's it called. Uh, what he what he was doing uh, a year ago. Uh, on today's show, we are going to be concepting a character clothing concept. Uh, if you watched Inside Star Citizen yesterday, uh, you saw a segment with Jeremiah there where we revealed the, uh, several of the oh, NPC yeah. concepts that have gone into production uh, ahead of Microtech uh, being added to the Star Citizen universe. And today, we are going to continue that work uh, and 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 build some. Uh, Oh, let's give Jeremiah a try and see if he can tell us what we're going to build today. Go ahead. Go ahead. You're it's back up the, now. It's not the Retaliator. No, not the Retaliator. Not the Retribution. It's it's another R ship. It's the salvage one for ages. Oh, my goodness. N not... Oh. Well, I'm aware of what it is. I'm not telling you at this point. Oh, it's going to kill me. Anyways. Hey, chat. What is it? <laughs> Reclaimer. Reclaimer. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, the Reclaimer. Okay. See, I had already moved on, though, to what oh. we're going to be doing today. Okay. Now you have to tell us what we're going to be doing oh, today. Oh, so um, uh, instead of like last time, actually, um, instead of just doodling around, I actually wanted to do a painting of a possible jacket that would go in the uh, Microtech. And so I wanted to show my process. I also have my reference board here on the left. Now we'll um, go ahead and bring that board up here. There we go. There we go. What, why is my face in your reference board? We're not doing that again. I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, this is the same reference board you brought up when we did the last time we did this, this which was not true. well over a year ago. This well, is it's not true. Okay, well, that had those pictures in it. You put those no, pictures no, back no, in no. I don't know what you're talking about. We are not doing another discount. Um, so, well, we <laughs> I have like uh, images of jackets, um, like snowboard gear, some very interesting cuts, and also some, some tech that I put in here. Um, there's also some tech on like the. Uh, on the hoodie, which I thought was really cool, and there's some tech on the sides. So those are the reasons why. Um, and also, I use a lot of architecture in my references as well. Why uh, is that? Uh, a lot of architecture, they have a lot of re repetitive shapes, but then uh, architects, they have to figure out a lot of... They have to come up with solutions for very trivial uh, problems, which is like the, the landscape. Um, so that it has to look good with repetitive patterns. Um, depending on, but they have to be able to do that on a very sophisticated ground plane or location. So like uh, they are very successful with doing a lot of these, um, these very stylistic and very design heavy architecture. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sorry, design. Wait. And so I use that as reference a lot. Is he in camera? <laughs> Just, okay, that camera, you show, you show him to that camera. Hello. You bringing your dog by? Hi Shane, how you doing? Good. We we, we got what? How, how long do we get? We got we got five minutes into the show. Oh, uh, I'll come back. In <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Shane. What, 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 what's your dog's name? It's Georgie. It's Georgie. It was Anton two weeks ago. It's Georgie now. Hi, hi Georgie. We got a show to do though. All right, bye bye. <laughs> Thank you, Shane. Bye, Shane. Um, carrying on, uh, also I bring in uh, some tech here, as you can see, some possible tech that we can put in. And also, I um, also use animals as well. Like, uh, so I thought, to use, uh, I thought to use penguins because, um, one, it's in a cold environment. Microtech is pretty much a snow planet. 
Um, and there's a lot of like uh, really cool shapes that are happening here, and I won't kind of want to incorporate that into the jacket. Um, and so nature does a lot of cool things. So you, you're using architecture, mm -hmm. which is obviously man-made, and you're using, uh, you said a penguin? A, a penguin. Why is my voice going down? Something going on with the audio. Keep going. Yeah. You sound fine. Okay, cool. Um, so I thought to use, um, I don't do this all the time, but sometimes I do look at nature to uh, bring up, you know, some sort of inspiration for coming up with some of the designs. Because I could just, you know, I could go to a website and look for, you know, like a jacket and uh, just copy that. But like, that's, that's not fun. And it's like very restricting. So, um, uh, and also nature has a lot of cool stuff. Um, so that's, that's actually kind of how we got to here as well. We use a lot of nature. <laughs> I just saw it on the bar <laughs> <laughs> what, do you, I don't know what, you mean. <laughs> what are you talking about, Jared? I have no idea what you're talking about. Uh, but yeah, um, I tend to use architecture and nature to kind of uh, come up with new designs, new uh, sometimes uh, solutions to function as well. If we want to put in some sci-fi tech, we have to justify why that thing is there in that specific shape. And so I turn to architecture and uh, animals. All right, so if you haven't uh, totally figured this out yet, uh, this isn't going to be one of those episodes where we answer a bunch of questions and you find out a bunch of stuff about the game. This is a game dev episode where we discuss process and the way in which one of our team members goes about <laughs> their day-to-day -day work. In this case, it's uh, uh, understandably pasting a bunch of my faces all over the place. We're going to get past that, though. Mm -hmm. So you have what looks like a, 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 a microtech looking person he's in a snowy background yeah what, I act, yeah what manufacturer is this this ELD this is going to be for ELD okay. uh, and we've shown some of that before uh, here we go we showed some of this before on uh, on an ATV I believe mm -hmm. oh, no, on, uh, is it ATV or ISC uh, one of those um, and um, uh, this was the style that uh, that me, my friend, no, I'm sorry, who, I don't remember. Another concept artist and I, we worked on this together just to really have a kind of like blanket shootout. Like what should ELD look like in microtech? So these are kind of like the trust fund kids, uh -huh. the, the guys who are more, how do you say, very well off. They're, they'd be in the top 10% in microtech. Uh, so they, they want to have the latest fashion. They want to be very... Uh, they're very they have their head above their their shoulders and type of like there's so many words that i can't say if i don't want to say on camera <coughs> but a lot of uh how do you say prideful and wealthy yeah oh i'm very loud now yeah um individuals and so eld was kind of like uh as this, um, i'll show i'll show everybody here this is the style guy that we cre we created for <coughs> eld and so uh, in our style guide, it kind of shows like what materials you, you have a they have access to, uh, what type of tech can go on here, shape language that goes on to the clothing. And also, which is interesting. Privileged. Huh? Privileged. Privilege. Now your mic is off. No, it's, it's on. It's just, it's just dying. Uh. It's made my head sense. It's been working, it was working through all of our tests. Yeah, what is You keep talking. Privileged. Okay. Privileged individuals. Um, but w the really cool thing that I wanted to show is on the style guide, we actually put on the side on the right, it's stuff that we don't want um, in, the, uh, in the design of that specific manufacturer. Um, so obviously we can't have too baggy clothing, it's nothing too formal, we can't have overbearing amounts of tech, um, we can't have like ripped clothing, nothing too artsy fartsy. I'm sorry. Or like you know, two extreme woman silhouettes. <laughs> this is an actual thing. <laughs> These yeah. Actual things. Um, so we we make this so that we can um, kind of guide the concept artist in the correct direction. So as a lead concept artist, I actually have to make a lot of these to make sure that the team is um, focused on one direction or uh, or general direction. And um, this type of information is very helpful for artists because. That way, I'm, I'm giving them boundaries to play in and not be like, the world is your oyster. It's like, the world is my oyster, is right. kind of, and play in it. That's <laughs> pretty much how it goes. But we'll be doing another jacket um, for Microtech. Um, I think we've shown a lot of uh, interior clothing, and I know um, 
yesterday we showed the uh, CB CB Code Blue Apparel, uh, Code Blue Apparel, um, which is a thick, heavy clothing. But CBA they mainly work on um, they they mainly uh, make like jumpsuits and uh, very padded, not necessarily fashionable type of clothing. And so uh, that's why I chose uh, ELD because these guys would probably not be wearing CPA clothing. They'd wear ELD because it's the the hip thing to do. So I'm we'll gonna go and try to get another headset. No, just give me. You keep doing what you're gonna do. Obviously, this was working fine for like the hour that we we tested. We were singing died. songs together. I know, and it died right as the song the show went live. So I'm gonna go get it. Okay, headset. sounds good. You take it from here. Okay, uh, cool. Chat, be nice to him. We'll be right back. Okay, cool. I am being unmonitored. I need an adult. Okay, cool. Um, so let's kind of start off with uh, uh, this one. I actually sketched this morning. Uh, I didn't because it takes about it takes me about an hour, about an hour and a half to put in a general character. I also have a general background uh, to place the character in, and I didn't actually use the waiter um, concept. Uh, which we showed yesterday, I believe, as a base, and just paint on top of it, change a couple things. But it doesn't matter because we're going to cover him up. And we, we named this uh, this uh, this fellow Brad. He's like, oh, hey. Hey, everybody. I'm Brad. We're going to make a jacket. So let's make a ELD jacket. Um, so what I normally do in this is in scenario, when I start something, I know that I have to design a jacket of some sorts. I will, I can just close this off. I actually just start blocking in shapes on top of kind of what we have here. So um, let's actually do, let's, let's rough something in real quick. It's so awkward. I'm just used to having Jared next to me while I, while I do these things. Um, so right now I'm just blocking in the shapes. What would a jacket look like on top of clothing? So I'm thinking, I'm not thinking of something too overbearing, uh, but it still has to be able to withstand uh, the cold temperatures of Microtech. Oh man, he started to look, ooh, hello. Let's see. I think we should, Jerry, should we give him a hoodie? Yes, let's give him a hoodie. And um, actually, I do want to cover up the front a little bit. Oh, that's really cool. So I'm actually looking at this image as reference kind of right now. I think that's really cool, very successful. <coughs> and, excuse me. And I'll be, once I have the general block in, uh, I'll be using the other references that we have, like the architecture stuff, the techie stuff, and the the nature stuff to uh, to flesh it out afterwards. I think he's starting to look really cool. Let's actually use some of that gray. So this process is actually very... Uh, it's fairly simple. <laughs> uh, I'm not really caring about necessarily the... Uh, Lou. Oh, you're back. Can you hear me? Kind no. of. Yeah, there, we go. Oh, there we go. I was so alone. There was nobody here beside me. No, I, th I think our... It's the audio mixer. The audio mixer is having trouble. Is it? This is the same original headset. Oh, the new what? headset didn't work. Eh, tech problems. It is what it is. Where was I? We were uh, adding a hoodie, I think. Yeah, we're adding a hoodie. So I'm, right now I kind of blocked in the general shape of what the jacket could look like. Um, and But I'm keeping it loose. Keeping it loose, if you notice, my brush is pretty big. It's, it's fairly big. Um, but... The reason why I keep my brush this big at this stage is just, just that I'm, I'm hitting the main notes. Mm -hmm. Not really caring about the uh, 
the, the, the little details just yet. I'm thinking of big cuts, um, just the coverage of, of the clothing first. And so, I think the black is not a good choice, probably because it's starting to look very urban. So I think. Right. See a lot of, uh, when you see uh, winter clothes or snow clothes in films, a lot of times, they're usually bright colors, mm -hmm. which, I, I, I mean, snow is obviously a very bright color. Um, is, is it is it to blend in or is it just because that's the environment and it's to, it's to match and complement instead of stand out in stark contrast? Well, a lot of it's kind of like to reflect off the sun. Um, black attracts in a lot of light, right? So if you, it's kind of like if you wear a white shirt or a black shirt out in the open mm -hmm. in the sun, uh, you'll get a lot hotter when you're wearing a black shirt because it just sucks in a lot of that light, a lot of that heat. So like... Um, and you got... Uh, Han Solo and Hoth, who wore black, while everybody else was wearing light colors. Han Solo's parka was dark colors. Because he's Han Solo. He's Han Solo. Yeah. Han Solo is not. He's not human. He's I just a, want to see where you're going with that. He's a hero. Oh, okay. <laughs> he's not just a man. <laughs> um. But yeah, I think the lighter, it also looks more like, uh, compared to the other one, which looked like uh, urban clothing, this looks more, I think, more winter outdoor. Yeah, let's New, go with this Noob is suggesting that we make it pink. You know what? Let's give it a shot. You know what? Let's try it. There you go. It's actually not bad. <laughs> it's actually not bad. Actually really it's cool. like a snow kit. A snow kit. Instead of a star kit, it's a snow Yeah, kit. I'm also ELD. Is they're very bright with their colors as well, uh, the previous ones. So actually, I'm not completely against it. Maybe we can look for like a pink highlight instead of like a like a primary color. Yeah. This is making me want strawberry quick. Is what this is doing. Oh, okay. I mean, this is not bad. It's not really pink. Yeah. Well, let's not worry about colors too much right now. Let's worry yeah. about shape. The and actual form. shape and form. Yeah. Oh, look at you, Jared. Look at you. I've been doing this a long time. Man, you're all grown up. All grown up. <laughs> we shall call it Pank. <laughs> <laughs> Says Don Steeler. <laughs> Pank. Okay. I think this is pretty much it. I, I don't really want to do a super long trench coat type of thing. Um, because they will be going out uh, outdoors. And I think a trench coat could be a little bit annoying in the snow yeah i could be wrong i'm sure there's a bunch of great people who charge the snow in a trench coat nothing against you I'm trying to think chad are there any in pop culture in, in sci-fi and genre entertainment are there any snow trench coats i mean it, i mean it sounds cool han solo wore a trench coat in the forest Every, nobody else had a <laughs> trench coat in the forest and han solo had a had a forest camo trench coat but he's han solo but again I'm, I'm trying to think of trying to think of an example of a snow trench coat snow job and gi joe didn't have a trench coat none of the characters in the thing had a trench coat snow troopers snow, snow troopers did they have trench coats uh, they, they had they had yeah they had, they had pretty long coats that that, that went that uh, that terminated oh, right, right above the ring. Yeah, ankles. yeah, you're yeah, right. Yeah, they did. It didn't really look like a trench coat because they had a really tight waist on them. Yeah. But yeah, that could be considered a, a, a trench of style. You know, let's give it a shot. Why not? We're still in the rough, the roughing out stage. So it's not. That's actually not bad. <laughs> and uh, actually, the reason why we can like play with the idea uh, of of a trench coat is actually this is actually I, I kind of we've briefly talked about it before in the previous interviews and stuff like that. But um, as you know, all our clothing and armor are modular, mm -hmm. so we have zones. The one thing that does not necessarily have zones are the jackets. So we just name it the jacket port, but um, anything underneath the jacket, they have to fit a certain zone, a cutoff, right? So that we can swap out with other stuff. Mm -hmm. 
but the jacket item goes on top of all of this so it can break every single rule that we set so we made kind of a, a kind of how, what do you call it uh, a port for creativity I guess just so that because if if we have the same zones for everything everything will be generally the same right so we'll just play within what's what we have it's a thing to kind of break that and um, so that our universe looks more fleshed out mm -hmm. diverse uh, we put the jacket port there so that even if we had a jacket that's a trench coat or if it's just cut off up to here, we can totally do that because it sits on top of our zones um, and the, like the shirts and pants. And so it allows us to do a lot of this crazy stuff. Uh, I'm not really into the, the trench coat anymore. <laughs> okay. I think that's a good link what you got right there. Yeah, I think this is really cool. Uh, but I think it, this, this serves a purpose. I'm kind of like, I think... Um, this is kind of a jacket that we can work with. And, uh, I'm totally okay with Jared, if you have any suggestions regarding tech and stuff like that, um, that you want, that you would like to go in here as well. Yeah, we're, we're just talking shape language at the moment. Mm -hmm. You're basically doing an over glorified thumbnail at the moment. Yeah. Um, uh, somebody had a question. I was looking for it here. Uh, I'm going to have to paraphrase it because it's not on the thing anymore. Mm -hmm. um, have you ever, uh, somebody was asking if you've ever cr at, uh, designed something uh, that wasn't using a real world reference and then somebody comes and points up a real world reference and goes, oh, this is just like this thing and pulls it up and you're like, oh. Yeah. Yes, that has happened. Uh, that has happened on a couple things. Um, Clothing, we get that quite a lot um, because there's just billions of clothing out there. It's and they all have to fit the same basic yeah, shape. Exactly. You know, so there's only so much variation you can exactly. do. Exactly. And that's actually the, one of the biggest things that we, we don't struggle with, but one of the challenges that we have to face is armor because we, ha uh, we come across the same problem where a human actually has to run inside of it. And so there's only so much shapes that we can play with um, on the macro scale. The micro scale, we can tweak things here and there. Um, but silhouette-wise, um, a lot of other, even uh, real, wor real world, and also um, other IPs. They, um, which I, I have friends in different, mm -hmm. different IPs, and we come across the same problem. It's just the arms move a certain way, yep. the legs move a certain way, and uh, also our torso only twists and turns a certain way as well. And so we come across the same problem, um, same challenge. Quite often, so there are times when uh, when I'll get well, I'll get text messages from my friends and be like, "Oh man, you stole my idea!" I was like, "I made this six months ago." I was like, "Oh, I thought about it last night." I'm like, "Yeah, we're solving the same problem." So it's just like <laughs> that's really what it comes down to: solving the same problem, yeah. making sci-fi futuristic armor. We, uh, many of us have the same influences. Mm -hmm. You know, we all grew up watching the same Star Trek, watching right. the same Star Wars, watching. The same, you know, Battlestar Galactica reboot, you know, all that stuff like that. So we all take from many of the same uh, uh, cultural influences, and then we apply that through our own individual prisms, and we come up with stuff that are that end up being iterations and variations of what everybody else is doing. Mm -hmm. It can be hard to to completely break free into something that's never been done before, and that's why you get when you showed on your mood board a lot of those fashions that like no don't do this like fashion designers tend to go into crazy crazy spaces just trying to break free from everything that's been done before. that's right i am not jealous of those guys i only mad respect <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> yeah, i i uh i worked at uh fight for a little bit at where fight the the fashion institute of it's fit em. Fit em. It wasn't very long. It was three weeks. No. <laughs> <laughs> I have a couple of friends who went to fit him as well. Question. Do you have some additional motorcycle riding gear? Just personally? No. I don't own a motorcycle or have any motorcycle riding gear. Do you have a motorcycle? I just said I don't have a motorcycle. Oh. This is, this is why we're in counseling. <laughs> you don't listen to me. <laughs> hey. I'm, I'm trying to do a thing. I'm trying to do a thing. That's why I'm trying to do a thing. <laughs> um, so right now I'm actually uh, sketching in the possible cuts, uh, but still keeping it loose because I'm not completely 
uh, convinced that this is the this is the jacket. Yeah. So right now, I'm just coming up with um, kind of a lot of a lot of this is also muscle memory of where I know um, seams tend to go, um, and where stitching normally are placed. But this is kind of my uh, refinement. I'm a refinement stage, I guess, of the sketch. Um, but there are, has been times when literally I'll just do that. I've done that before too, um, because this, we're just we're just working loose. These are pretty quick. Uh, I normally don't talk while I'm doing this, so <laughs> yeah, I'm a little slower than I am um, when I actually work. No, we've we've had that conversation before when we do like the the gameplay streams. Mm -hmm. um, I find it very difficult to talk and play effectively at the same time. Yeah, the you know the, the the big name streamers not even the big names just the successful streamers uh, when i say success i mean the ones who can actually talk and play at the same time uh, are incredibly impressive to me because when i talk I, I, my hands tend to be very sluggish and non-responsive when i'm mm -hmm. talking which is weird because i tend to move them around quite a bit but maybe that's what it is because i i tend to move my hands around when i talk and when i'm playing and talking i can't maybe it's that it's that it's locking my hands mm, oh maybe, that, maybe that's oh what does it. Maybe. maybe that's what does it could be uh, how does this concept phase tie in with the 3d modeling phase um so normally um hmm. Well, normally at the very end, when we have a concept that we like and we get it approved, we pass that image over to the the modelers, mm -hmm. the character artists, and then they'll build, um, they'll realize the concept into game. Um, so they'll sculpt it out first in ZBrush, um, do as a detailed, um, a, a detailed sculpt as much as they can. Um, but that's during their uh, during that time, the character artists will talk with our tech artists to make sure that it fits the volumes, fits the zones, that it also it is, will be possible for that thing to function in the game. We know a lot of our ship concepts are concepted in 3D now mm -hmm. uh, because metrics are an incredibly yes. important part of uh, ships. Mm -hmm. As we've learned from building the ships that were concepted out in 2012, 2013, 2014 versus the ships that are concepted out today. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very helpful to concept in 3D. Yes. We, we don't do many of our character concepts in 3D, though. No. Uh, the reason why uh, the reason why the, uh, the ship team... Um, I'm not part of the ship team, so if I get something wrong, please don't scream at me. Um, but our ships have a lot of um, interactions with uh, the actual player, right? So there's there are zones where a character animation will trigger or they'll be compared other ips or other stuff that i've worked on before like you click a button and either the character snaps to that thing or they'll do a kind of a magical hand wave and the animation will trigger uh, the thing with star citizen though is when your character reaches out and grabs something it's actually grabbing something in the actual space so there are metrics to, so for these things right for characters not so much. Um, there isn't anything on a jacket where you <laughs> activate something. <laughs> so not yet, anyway. Well, well, we'll see about that. <laughs> we, um, but it's uh, the we the metrics that we have, I guess, would be just the zones, which is just for modularity. Um, and there's not that much gameplay in swapping a jacket out yeah. compared to a ship where you click on this button then a component will open up right? you also get to work uh in the same area sometimes at the same in the same row of desks with the riggers and yes. stuff so that when these things get built out if, the, if we should find a conflict like a place where oh you know you didn't have the bend in the correct place here mm -hmm. and now it doesn't work um you can identify that very quickly and, mm -hmm. and make the ch make the changes to the concept necessary yeah. Yeah. to do that in a way that's a, a bit faster than a weekend with a giant spaceship. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, clothing tends to be quite... Uh, it's, it's very quick compared to a ship, and the reasoning why is just... Um, like I said, there's, there's so many things that go in a ship compared to clothing. Um, there's just so many moving parts when it comes to ships. Um, but for clothing, not so much. And also... Um, it's very, for the character artist, it's very helpful to have concept uh, because you'll have an artist that would design clothing so that we have the design locked in, right? And also the concept artist will try to be um, as helpful as they can by respecting a lot of the zones. But there are times when I tell a concept artist like, hey man, just go nuts. 
right? Just give me something really cool and we'll figure it out. And tech artists are very, they're super talented. They're very, uh, they're, they're a lot smarter than me, way smarter than me. Yeah, um, engage. It, well, yeah, 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 he's definitely way smarter than me. Um, and, uh, they'll, they'll try to cater to, to the art. Um, and so it's, uh, the concept artist actually does shorten a lot of the production time when a, of, of an asset, just because if you have a character artist trying to come up with a lot of things while thinking about this has to go in the engine, it's just a lot of things to process. So the concept kind of cuts that production time. Uh, for those of you who are asking questions in the chat, remember we're talking about uh, process uh, as far as what we're doing here. Uh, it's general process related questions. Why do we do this kind of thing? What do we do this? If you're asking, is this thing in the game or is this thing going to be in the game? Uh, this is not the show for those kind of types of questions. Uh, it's not the type of question that a character concept artist would be able to answer. So if you're, if you're, if your question's about game features, uh, this is not the show for that one. Just to help you out because I don't want you to sit there and ask the question 14 times in the chat over the next hour and be like, why are they ignoring me? I'm, 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 <laughs> <laughs> trying to help you out here. This is not the show about game features. Mm -hmm. So if the question starts with, well, how will this work? Or will, it, will, will we be able to? Or something like that. That's not this show. This is a show about Jeremiah's progress. That's about me. Process. It's all about me. Um, hey, girl. <clears throat> hey, girl. So I, I got a basic shape of the jacket. Um, I think it's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Um I haven't actually figured out what this actually is yet. Um, right but now, it's almost got like a country western kind of. Style. Yeah. When you leave it with just the top there, yeah. If you didn't like carry it down, it would. It almost seems a little western, mm -hmm. a sci-fi western. Yeah, but which, which I, I think I've been kind of going in that direction, kind of um, been feeling it out a little bit. Um, Somebody was asking in chat earlier if we do space cowboys. I mean, I would love a space cowboy. You're not getting me to sing, only because I don't know if my mic's gonna cut out. Oh. <laughs> um, uh, but we have used um, some for some of the designs, uh, like for the uh, the bounty hunter concept that we showed off as well. Uh, a lot of that was inspired by uh, some of the western films and also just um, like cowboy style. Uh, Let's follow up on that a little bit while you're doing this. Mm -hmm. uh, you, one of the things you mentioned in the ISC 7 yesterday was doing bounty. You, we've already done the ship jackers in yeah. the past yeah. and trying to come up with bounty hunters that don't look like ship jackers. Mm -hmm. And what were the what were the similarities you were running into and how are you how are you uh, working to avoid that? So for ship jackers, um, they're the, the brief that we got was they're very theatrical, but at the same time, they're um, they put together what they want on their armor and they'll just kit bash stuff together. Uh, the thing with um, bounty hunters is these guys are professionals, um, but they won't be wearing a uniform, right? If, and just any, even current day, what do you, what do you call it? Head hunters? Is that what you call them? They just dog the bounty hunter. They call them, they call them bounty hunters. Yeah, but they're like, they, they don't. They don't have Head, like headhunters are people that find you jobs. Oh, that's not uh, nice yeah. So, but you know those those, those, those are, are very different than bounty. I hunters. guess like I guess what would you call them like a? I think they're just called bounty hunters. Pri private investigators, like you know those people. Well, you know, they're like bounty hunters often have a private investigator. Yeah, license, yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. But like those those type of people, they don't have like they don't wear cop uniform no. or like you know. So they they wear what's um, what they want to wear, which is efficient for the stuff that they do. Um, so it's geared the clothing or the armor is geared towards their profession. Right. Yeah. So, uh, uh, recovery agents. I think that uh, like fe like fe like fe like federal recovery agents. Sure. Like, I, th I don't. Know, they, they they're going through with some. Yeah, but ideas. but regardless, um, the the ship jackers for a while they were the only ones that were kind of um, uh, non uniform like style. Uh, the slavers to a certain extent they were kind of like that, but like. Um, ship jackers were the extreme version of that. So, how do how do we make uh, armor that looks tailored to an individual that's a professional while not looking kit bashed was kind of and the not tricky part. Like uniform. Yes. So we had to find a balance of that, um, and also making something look customized uh, is quite difficult if it's tame. Um, yeah. 
because we can just go the crazy route, just add spikes to it, right? right? And just say it looks customized. But if it's for someone that's very methodical, someone that's very logical, very strategic, it's a little difficult to come up with personalized things. Like the moment you put like a sticker on them, they don't look orderly or like they, they look like they'll just fool around. Uh, but when we want them to look like they mean business, well, they'll be like, you know, pounding on your door. Be like, I'm here to collect. That kind. Yeah. A very utility focus. I yeah. Think, yeah. And so that was actually the trickiest part uh, for the bounty hunters. Um, so right now I'm actually looking at this architecture piece right here. And I, I really do like this shape right here. Uh, this, this pattern that's happening. Uh, I'm trying to see if I can maybe incorporate some of that here. It would be really cool. Um, let's actually grab some of that yellow over there. And uh, actually, you'll probably you probably notice by now. Um, I tend not to like grab colors from the the color palette. Mm -hmm. um, I actually grab colors from uh, from photos, and the reason why I do that is because most of these photos are taking place in real life, right? And so. The colors that are in the photos are real, and they're reacting to the sun or some sort of light. And so the colors that are here are not like, they're very actually kind of pastel. They're not like your, let's, let's pick this yellow for a second, right? If I were to pick yellow, my natural instinct would come here. So it's super right. saturated, right. right? But if I grab it from a photo, it's more realized, it's more realistic. Um, nothing is ever this bright. And this is like a fresh cone of paint that's been with like 10 layers of that in a very controlled setting. Um, so that's kind of like one of the, for all you artists out there who are picking stuff up, what I tend to do. Um, uh, so design in men's fashion is mm -hmm. often very utility based. Mm -hmm. While for women, it's more often about look over mm -hmm. utility or style over utility. Mm -hmm. How do you balance that since we're often making uh, outfits that work for both men and women so for um, I do I do understand where that question is coming from so the thing is I try to keep the um, the clothing gender neutral right um, there are some cases when we make them specifically cater to a specific gender sometimes um, but I would say about 80 to 90 percent of the time I try to keep gender neutral so like I'm not accentuating his um, like this, this character is like um, this figure too much. It's kind of very broad. Um, I wouldn't put like I wouldn't put cuts like right here, and then I wouldn't put like an ab thing like right here. I, I wouldn't do that because obviously this wouldn't look good on a female, right? And so I try to keep I keep that in mind, and I've done it for so long as well at this company and uh, for Star Citizen. So like it's a it's kind of a natural habit for me. Um, but I try to keep them as gender neutral as possible. Sometimes design will call out, oh, it has to be a specifically tailored towards um, women. Then that's when um, I might change the cuts of things. Mm -hmm. But the overall look uh, and the overall feel of the character, I will do that based off of what that character is. So if that character is uh, a very attractive individual at a bar that's trying maybe to... Maybe it's like a like a James Bond type of villain that's trying to like seduce a player or something. Then there's a little bit of like a look that I would look for. What a look that I would look for. There's a look that I would. Um, You're an artist, not a. Wizard. That I would. Re <laughs> I would uh, research, right? And so seduction would be one. Um, so I would cater. I would drive that drawing or that concept in that certain direction. But if the uh, regardless of gender, if the direction of that concept is supposed to be utilitarian regardless of what gender it is, I'll make it look utilitarian, right? And so um, gender doesn't really play a factor in concept unless it's been specifically called out like this. Like, for instance, Twitch Pacheco okay. looks very utilitarian, right? Um, combat focus. So she didn't look, uh, it, she wasn't sexualized in any sort of way. Uh, she wasn't um, taking a direction. She's not wearing a, like a, a, a dress, like a bar dress type of thing. Um, she, that character happens to be female and she's wearing tactical gear, right? And so, um, it's, it really depends on the brief and then the concept artist will follow that brief. So gender is kind of like, eh, 
Especially when you're trying to extrapolate out 940 years in the future. Yeah, that's that's the <laughs> that's also really hard. Now, one of the actually the challenges I do want to bring up though is actually how do we make this look futuristic but not still recognizable? Yeah, that's right. always the hard part because clothing that we're wearing now is way different than 500 years ago, right? It's way different than. 100 years 100 years ago yeah the only thing that's kind of stayed is probably like tuxedos and suits uh, but that's because we we were like oh that's just a that's just tradition that we yeah. keep but even that's slowly starting to change so um but 900 years in the future so that's that's actually something that um that i get into arguments with uh with the artists <laughs> we run into that in all aspects we run yeah. into it in ship art we we run into into it with environment art <clears throat> it's you want to extrapolate out to 900 years in the future, but we're not making a game for 900 years in the future. We're making a game for people that live today. Yeah. So you still want to have visual cues and things that, that folks can build an emotional attachment to that they instantly recognize today. Right. That, that you instantly say, okay, that's a chef. Okay, that's a supply closet. Right. Okay, that's a, that, <laughs> you know, that, 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 that's a dune buggy. You know, so, so you, you want to build enough of these uh, uh, visual attachments that we that players today can recognize, at, you know, instinctively what it is, but at the same time, uh, you know, demonstrate some manner of progress. Nine hundred and forty years exactly. into the future, it's a it's a delicate balance to toe in everybody from our environment teams to our ship teams to even our character teams are constantly uh, balancing that. That was actually the trickiest part, which was the the chef. Uh, the chef concept that we did because uh, like I said in the in the in, in the video uh, the chef outfits today are super simple and we we're like how do we make that look sci-fi um, and we were really struggling with that for about a couple of days and we're like uh, so the solution that was we look for <laughs> the most complex looking chef outfit mm -hmm. that still f that still was still relevant to the other normal looking chef outfits the hat did a lot a lot of the selling yeah uh, and also the big buttons um and just having that the apron in the front um so that we were like okay what were the key beats of the uh, of a chef outfit and then we started putting tech lines on it and interesting cuts we we're like maybe they use different types of fabrics maybe they use like stain resistant fabric yeah 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 and so like maybe it's a little bit more difficult to well, no maybe it's easier to cut right so we made it a little bit more intricate um and so that was we had to find a lot of different ways to solve a very simple so simple request which is give us a chef <laughs> so it's like we have to come up with a lot of uh, solutions for that uh, one of, of the questions in the chat says have you ever considered leds or other animated effects on microtech outfits uh yes we have and we talked about it on isc last quarter did we? Yeah, when we showed off the, the, the first ELD. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I closed so I can bring it back Did you have some of that stuff? Uh, that's actually the, the <coughs> ELD is the manufacturer we're working with for now for this. Mm -hmm. So you already introduced a number of uh, LED effects. Mm -hmm. So let's do that. I, I closed it, so let's bring it back. So this was a very, very, this is a very, uh, what do you call it? Uh, very risky move that I made on this one, um, but I wanted to kind of push like what our clothing is, and this is actually our first uh, Terra brand uh, that the uh, that our uh, community has seen. And so for Microtech, um, I was <laughs> I pitched the idea of maybe I can actually see the individual like stock, stock portfolio. Stock portfolio. Like, the, like just they have their stock portfolio yeah, right down the It's just shirt. like, and it's updating, and it's like scrolling. And uh, I have absolutely no trouble <laughs> believing that that will exist one day. I think it will. I think it will. People would flex, or people would just be super depressed looking at their own. Um, but also, this is the crazy. I was also here too. Stock numbers just on like their little <laughs> bands here. But this was the biggest one. Having ship commercials being played on their on their clothing. So also keep in mind this all of this is concept. None of this is guaranteed to go in the game. So this is all just me spitballing ideas to um, the directors and also Tack and also Chris and also the art directors as well. Um, but also LEDs are here. Um, we were actually talking about um, animating textures. So like if we were to 
put a video or a um, of a some sort of like scrolling texture. Mm -hmm. uh, we do have the tech to do that. Uh, it, however, it is very expensive. Yeah. Um, so there are methods of doing that. Uh, is it wise to do it? Probably not. Um, because eventually you're going to have 300 people all standing in the same place. Yeah. All 300 different videos. Exactly. On their, on their video exactly. T -shirts. Yeah. But I did uh, talk to Dave Haddock about, you know, just, just just spitballing ideas. I think we were just drinking coffee and we're sitting down, we're chatting. And uh, we, I brought this up to him and he was like, it'd be really cool if you were broke and uh, and you just needed money and you're stuck and your ship's all somewhere else. You got dropped off somewhere and you have no money. And so, you know, the... the uh, the warriors, beautiful people who stand outside with the signs and they wear the Statue of Liberty clothing. So imagine that, but it'll be like a an Aegis shirt that just plays Aegis commercials 24-7. And you just go around. It's like a little career. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And just, just like every eight hours. You're you, walking you, advertising. You, 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 you get a little deposit, tick, yeah. You get a direct deposit in your, <laughs> yeah, in your exactly. wallet. So we did talk about that. We thought that was super funny. And I totally, th I totally can see that 900 years in the future as oh, well. Absolutely. Um, I think uh, having ads play as well uh like you have your uh there was one for this one uh i spoke with gage about was what if like the colors of the uh the shirt would just change um and we just have to do like a an animating video and just kind of uv it on here uh, but like these black areas what if they were like kind of after every 10 seconds it'll just kind of like flip over to the other side and it'll reveal a different color um so we uh, for concept also like i'm very like what if we did all this crazy stuff and i'm like what concepts are for yeah and then gage and Corey will instantly shut me down all the crazy ideas and then everybody <laughs> else tells you what you're gonna actually do so i'm i'm like the the dreamer i'm the dreamer yes. and then Corey is the realist and gage is also a realist it's like so. last year when you sprung chef lando on me and then or chef disco and then uh, all the uh, <coughs> all the source files for that image disappeared <sighs> I might have photographic memory. I could always bring him back. See plenty of me outside the game. We don't need to. I don't need to be invited. Oh, you don't need. I do. <laughs> All right, we, got, we got about fifteen minutes. Oh, what really? Yeah. Oh my goodness, no. Okay, I'm gonna speed this up. I'm gonna speed this up. Da, 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 oh no! Da, da, da. I thought by painting the dude, I'd cut the time. Well, I did cut the time, but. Oh no. Are you saying that this work takes longer than an hour to do? Yeah. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Well, also, um, I I normally I'm I'm a lot more focused. Um, that's debatable. Yeah, well, I mean, that's what I want them to think. Um, but right now I'm doing a for for those guys who don't know Photoshop, I'm using a soft light layer. I just masked. I selected this, selected the entire bread, or this bread and his jacket. Um, mask it onto here so anything that I paint in here won't go outside of it so it'll stay within here so it's also a cool trick that I do and so right now I'm putting a basic lighting pass on the jacket because without this it looks very flat and so now I'm actually adding value to the clothing oh man it's already been 45 minutes dude mm -hmm. oh no it's terrible um, but I normally do this pass really quick just to get a feel of how the jacket feels, like kind of wrapped around the uh, the character. Now it's very flat. Now it actually starts to look like it's actually wrapping around him. It actually has some volume. What do we talk about for forty five minutes? Um, okay. Uh, I'm not asking him that question. What? What? Ask me what? Uh, someone wants to know why you're so sweet. Oh. What made you this way? Oh. I was born this way. Do you dungeon master in your shirt? He does. Although not for like a year. Hey, man. <laughs> hey, man. I can't believe it's been a year since we've done this. I know. Like, like, Chef, I like know. Chef Disco was I want to do ago. more of this. This is a lot of fun. You know what I would like to do? Like maybe we could, uh, since I'm live, you can't stop me. <laughs> what I would like to do is like maybe we just take an, like a, t a character from beginning to end. It could just be a concept, like part two, like or pause wherever we end with this mm -hmm. and come back to mm -hmm. this later. Yeah, it doesn't have to be this one, but like in the, it could be like you know, just just just, dude. 
Think of all the content that we can make. We have the power, Jared. We have the power. It's not a new Monday show. It's hard, <laughs> it's hard enough to fill this show every Friday. Wait, every Monday? <laughs> every Friday. Jeez. Dude. I mean, I would, I would have a lot of fun, People dude. think making videos is the easiest thing in the world. Like, I know. Know, it's like, like, people want to work. Dude, it's it's easy with people. Look, I make so much content for you. Look at this. Look, I'm like a I'm like a I'm like a gold mine. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, what can I go over? So let's talk about different materials. Do we have time? Oh, yes. ten minutes. Ah, let's talk about different materials. Okay. So painting materials. Um, so the thing that I've kind of learned over the the years is that cloth and metal and plastic they have a different. Uh, well, we say spec um but pretty much is how that material reacts to light so like uh you can you can see it kind of like today with cars right yeah. you see cars that have matte like matte black and right. you also have that shiny that shiny car paint um and also if you look at cloth it's not as super shiny as well and sometimes you have like leathers which are super shiny so knowing kind of uh the the spec values or just a general spec of materials will actually help differentiate what is cloth, what is um, metal. So that way our character artists know exactly what that type of metal is. Because if I just gave this to them, they'll be like, I have no idea what that is. Exactly. Um, so for instance, let's just make this more of a, let's make this more of a plastic or it could be like a, like a matte metal if you wanted to. Um, this would have a. Yeah, I think I feel like in, a, in an Arctic environment, you'd want matte and not shiny because there's mm -hmm. going to be enough shine off the snow mm -hmm. that you, you, you'd want whatever can suck up a reflection. Yeah, I agrees. I agrees. Oh man, I have to like speed paint now. Speed paint, speed paint. <laughs> Why not a daily show? Because people are here to work and make a video game, not make <laughs> videos. I get to make, I get, you know, we get to make these videos by the grace of our developers who take the time out of their <gasps> schedules doing their actual jobs to do our videos. By my so, grace. By your grace and the grace of many others. Oh, but it's about me now. It, it, this particular moment for the next <laughs> eight minutes, it's about you. <laughs> okay, let's add a little bit of. back here Ooh. so the highlights really do a lot of the trick um, if you notice that I make a lot of make a crap ton of layers too it's a bad habit I should stop but I don't I'm sorry I got a, I got a clicky clacky keyboard Also, a little thing that can help with the material um, is adding tech lines. I can add little screws if I wanted to. And so like, now you can clearly, clearly tell that this is no longer cloth when it looked like cloth before, uh, which is very important when it comes to rendering. Um, and the character artist being able to differentiate what material is what is also very, very important. And also for the tech artist, they have to know uh, if something is, is metal or something is cloth because metal doesn't bend naturally, right? So like, but cloth does. Mm -hmm. um, and so all that information is very important. I'm just rambling now. I'm, I'm letting you. I want to keep painting the... Your producer sits right over there. I'm not, I'm not going to keep you past the time I agreed to with your producer. <laughs> because then your producer will yell at me. 
I get yelled at by enough producers. Oh, well. <coughs> well, what's what's an additional? <laughs> I'm not going for a record. <laughs> I broke the record like three years ago. No. But yeah, I mean, we're coming running out of time. But for me, um, I think it does need some sort of color to pop it out. It does kind of seem ELD's very flashy. Mm -hmm. And so this one seems kind of a, a little mundane, a little bit more utilitarian uh, than what ELD would make. So I think colors would help, textures would also help. I can kind of like do a quick, um, this is not what I would do, uh, but just for example, I could just put some sort of texture on top of here to make it feel more, uh, more, I say crazy, a little bit more high fashion. Mm -hmm. um, so this would be kind of like a step that I might take um, to kind of spice things up a bit. So also the color choice is kind of, uh, it's very utilitarian, which is not ELD. Um, but like that's something like this is very interesting, I think. Not cool. nearly enough douche in that jacket. You can say douche? Oh, well, the way he's, uh, uh, he makes it uh, like a sound effect, the way he's meant. Like skadoosh? Oh, yeah, like skadoosh. Skadoosh. Have I used... He wasn't spelling it the inappropriate oh. way. He was spelling it the sound effect way. Oh, okay. Have, have I used my, my, uh, my swear currency? Have I used it all up? I'm not going to answer that question. <laughs> I've been a good, I've been a, I've been a good, I've been a good, a good boy for the past couple streams. Yeah, the last stream was a year ago. Yeah. But you, you, you don't get credit for not doing So them. does that reset anytime soon? No. Oh, okay. All right, just check it. I just want to know what my boundaries are. If I, if I still get crap from 2015, you still get crap. <laughs> The internet never forgets. Oh. I mean, the internet doesn't have to say. <laughs> oh, I think this is actually... The pink's actually not bad, dude. I'm not, yeah, not going to lie. The pink and the gray. It's actually like, actually not a, not a bad combo. I'm definitely going to work on this after, after, uh, after this. This is, this is a lot of fun. This is what really, this is the fun part of concept for me is actually at this stage. It's actually not the rendering part because I get to come up with, you know, uh, interesting ideas, possibly test some things, try some things. And like I said before, like, oh crap. Sometimes I just merge everything down and just erase everything. Like I've done that before. The CIG equivalent of a Star Wars Christmas special. Uh, I'll, 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 I'll tell you, uh, there's a story about that. We actually, we actually, uh, Ben and I used to dream about doing a Star, uh, our version of the old Star Wars holiday special, a whole variety show with us singing terrible songs and filmed on like a Super 8 camera and stuff like that. We used to, we used to dream about that quite a bit. I'd be down. Well, the 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 holiday live stream that nobody talks about, kind of. Oh. There's, there's no real reason to do a, oh. a fake terrible show oh. when you've done an actual terrible show. Oh. So that, 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 that dream died. Ouch. That dream died. We could still do as it. As well as a very large part of myself that day. We could still do it. I could be like the, the, the mommy Chewbacca. The mama Wookiee. You could be the uncle. <laughs> You've actually seen the, uh, the, the holiday special, though, right? I know. I'm just leaving you out there on your own. What do you mean? I thought we're bros. We're bros. Wow, what does that sound? But yeah. Uh, all right, Jared, you did bring up the idea before, like, what if we had, like, a uh, self-insulator type of thing? Like, it had a glow on the inside. Yeah, of yeah, the, yeah, the yeah. Cups, kind of on the inside thing to make it seem like it was heating you. Yeah, I think that's a really cool idea. 
Uh, we can actually have it kind of like in here as well. Like that's where the glow from this ELD thing comes from. Yeah. It's like an interior thing. That would be really cool, actually. And also adding LEDs makes things look sci-fi, kind of. I'm not going to lie. I kind of used that trick a couple of times, too. Not all the time. But this is pretty much a very good state of where, like, I could show the art director, um, kind of like, this is the kind of direction I'm thinking about, you know what I mean? And this is uh, more than enough to be like, okay, I get the idea. And then, I'll, of course, I'll pitch it to him and explain certain things. But this is a, this is a good place for, like, a, um, how do you say, like, just to, just to present kind of internally yeah. uh, before we pitch it up to the other directors. Um, what I'm thinking about. Also, you know, colors are super subjective. There are going to be people who are like, yeah, you know, this this pink is great. And there are people that are going to be like, they're going to see this pink and they're going to instantly be like, no, I don't want any, any right, of this. Right, of course. Like, this is probably a bit too much pink for me, personally. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But but not for Brad. You you don't tell Brad what to wear. No, I don't. No, Brad, Brad's Brad. I Brad. thought it was Brad. Yeah, he's is it Brad. Brad or Brad? He's Brad. Oh, it sounded like you were saying Brad. He's Brad. could find a better picture of me than that. It's Brad. 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 Hey, Jeremiah. I love your concepts. Especially Brad's pink jacket. I'm losing my mind, dude. <laughs> and that's it for this that's week's it. Star Citizen Live. Uh, what a concept. Uh, we hope you've enjoyed hanging out with us uh, for the last hour at the end of a very long week. Uh, you can tune in uh, next week. We'll be back with another Star Citizen Live. Um, uh, I don't want to tell you what it is just yet because it's not 100% confirmed. But uh, if I pull it off, uh, we'll get a visit from an old friend that we haven't seen in quite some time. So... Uh, He hasn't confirmed that. Oh, really? Yeah, he hasn't confirmed that. But I'm hoping. If it's not next week, it'll be soon. Oh, dude, that's amazing. So look out, look for an announcement on Monday. Uh, and uh, yeah, so for Jeremiah and for uh, me, uh, Jared, we'll, we'll, we'll see you next week, everybody. No, we were on this camera. Thanks for watching. For the latest and greatest in Star Citizen and Squadron 42, you can subscribe to our channel or you can check out some of the other shows. And you can also head to our website at www.robertsspaceindustries.com. Thank you very much for watching.